Hi, I'm David Mullins, a process engineer with Enviromix, and this is the first video in a four-part series discussing how wastewater recovery facilities can optimize biological phosphorus removal. Many plants use some form of phosphorus removal to meet stringent regulatory requirements. Some use chemicals to remove phosphorus, which has its pros and cons, but in the next few minutes, I'm gonna focus on and explain the basics of removing phosphorus biologically a process often called EBPR, or Enhanced Biological Phosphorus Removal. Biological phosphorus removal is the process by which naturally occurring organisms in the wastewater accumulate phosphorus as they travel through the treatment plant. The microbes that carry the majority of the phosphorus are aptly named Phosphorus Accumulating Organisms, or PAOs. The process by which PAOs assimilate phosphorus and grow is critical to achieving EBPR. Activated sludge is a community of microbes that are all vying to thrive in a competitive environment. In activated sludge processes with aerobic and anoxic environments, PAOs are unable to compete with other microbes to access the food. However, when the activated sludge is exposed to alternating anaerobic and aerobic environments, the PAOs are selected and able to flourish. Here's how it works. In the anaerobic phase, PAOs consume carbon through volatile fatty acids or VFAs. Other microbes require oxygen to consume carbon and grow, but PAOs, as their name suggests, have stored phosphorus they can use in the absence of oxygen to take up carbon. The PAOs release phosphorus and convert and store carbon within the cell as compounds called PHAs. You may notice that this step actually releases more phosphorus into the wastewater, and you would not be alone in thinking, if we want to remove phosphorus, why are we letting the microbes release it? But what's important to understand with this phase is that the anaerobic environment gives PAOs a competitive advantage to grow that they wouldn't otherwise have with aerobic treatment alone. So this is why it's vital that an anaerobic selector environment be truly anaerobic and that it has sufficient VFAs to grow the PAOs. So what is a truly anaerobic environment? An anaerobic environment means there's no free oxygen, nor any chemically bound oxygen, such as nitrate. And further, when measuring the ORP, a truly anaerobic environment should stay below negative 200 millivolts. So after passing through a truly anaerobic selector, the activated sludge enters an aerobic zone. In the aerobic zone, PAOs use their carbon reserves as an energy source for phosphorus uptake and new cell growth. Phosphorus uptake in the aerobic environment is significantly greater than phosphorus release in the anaerobic environment. And that means there's a net removal of soluble phosphorus after the activated sludge passes through this aerobic zone. The final step in the EBPR process occurs in the clarifier. The PAOs leave the mainstream process through waste activated sludge, leaving the treated water with a very low concentration of phosphorus. Plants looking to achieve EBPR should follow the approach we just discussed. However, there are many plants with anaerobic selectors that still struggle with effective phosphorus removal. In the next video, we'll look into how a VFA shortage can limit EBPR and learn how plants can produce additional VFA using a process called fermentation. Thanks for watching.